folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. In the tradition of Halloween, I'm about to review a stop-motion animated classic from Tim Burton and director Henry Selleck. Yep, and it came out on October 22nd, 1993, which is called The Nightmare Before Christmas, or simply Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, which is a story about the pumpkin cane of Halloween Town called Jack Skellington who discovers the joy of another holiday called Christmas. And this is of course the DVD edition that I got back in 2008. It's a two disc set. Yep, which of course comes with this <laughs> as a slipcover. And it reveals just a picture of Jack. Yep, which is actually made out of soft plastic. They also have this uh, box set on Blu-ray as well, even though the Blu-ray is basically a slip cover. But this is just the actual box set. So once you open it up, you just reveal you know, all this uh, stuff that they put in you know, for Blu-rays and, and all those other crap. And then here we go. We got the digital copy and the DVD, which is a two disc set, all the way. All held up together. <laughs> so, yes. So there you go. Has all the extras on the back. Yep. Everything. And this was a movie I remember watching as a kid. We went to see this in theaters with my family. We had a good time. It was just beautifully animated the way it was meant to be. It, it definitely reminded me of all the other stop motion animation that we've seen in, in the past but they brought it back to life at the time in the 90s when they knew they were going to come up with something new and Tim Burton was actually coming up with other shorts before he had a chance to do this for Disney but of course the studio at the time was released by Touchstone Pictures a sub diary of, of Disney because you know, at the time Michael Eisner, yeah, the CEO decided that to actually you know, release it instead of Walt Disney Pictures because of issues of some dark scares and all this other stuff that they put into it. They later re-released this in 2006 as part of the 3D presentation that they just released um, in um, theaters everywhere, including the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. So you get to see this beautiful film in 3D the way it was meant to be. Yep, and they were playing it um, during that time. Still holds up well, as we know it, because I always love the stop motion animation that they use for it. Yeah. Oh, it has everything. Oh, and not only that, uh, I got the soundtrack as well. Bought this uh, back in 2008. Also, at Target. At a very good price. It's a two to set, of course for this uh, CD. It's it's in hologram. Yeah, in the back you have all the artists and and all the breasts here. <laughs> so it's pretty much can get everything. C D. Just booklet with pictures. <laughs> There's all the lyrics as we speak. Uh, I'm not going to show too much of it, but it's you pretty much would know what it is if you have the soundtrack. But it's, um, I figured because, you know, I always loved this movie, and I've been a big fan of it, too. And I know Hendra Selleck went on to do other stop-motion animated films, well, for a while, of course. Um, because I know he did that film, James and the Giant Peach, in 1996. 
Yep, which was based on a Ron Dell book. And also, he went on to direct that terrible film, Monkey Bone, which was totally forgettable. And it gave him a couple years before he finally got to do the film Coraline for Laka Entertainment. Yeah, that's based on the book by Neil Gaiman. Yeah. I would love to review that film sometime. So, um, yeah. Number for Christmas. Awesome movie. So let's get right to the review. It stars Chris Sarandon from Fright Night and Child's Play. Yeah, with Danny Elfman uh, providing the, the singing voice. Catherine O'Hara, William Hickley, Glenn Shadek, Ken Page, Ed Ivory, and Paul Rubens. It's written by Caroline Thompson, yeah, based on the story by Tim Burton, as well as the characters. Yeah, with Danny Elfman doing the music score. And it's directed by Henry Selick. The movie begins set in the forest, leads to several towns of various holidays, which includes Valentine's Day, Fourth of July, St. Patrick's Day, Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, and of course Halloween, where we lead to a fantasy world called Halloween Town, which is filled with citizens such as deformed monsters, ghosts, ghouls, goblins, vampires, werewolves, and witches. But that's when we finally meet the Pumpkin King, who's a skeleton named Jack Skellington, who organized the annual Halloween holiday every year, which unfortunately he has grown very tired of. So he decided to wander in the woods, you know, with his trusty dog, who stumbles across several holiday doors and he opens a portal who wants up accidentally going in into Christmas Town which residents are charged with organizing the annual Christmas holiday under the guidance of Santa Claus that is. I mean that alone he became so impressed by the feeling and style of Christmas that Jack decided to bring his presence of findings of of the meaning and understanding of Christmas to the residents of Halloween Town so that way they'd be able to understand but of course they failed to to realize the meaning because they pretty much compared everything to Halloween but um, of course there's even one Christmas character that they can also relate to turn out to be a fearsome lobster like king who flies at night, known as Sandy Claus. But since Jack barely understands Christmas himself, he just basically studies the, the whole meaning of, of the holiday. And plus he got so obsessed with it that he leads him to become simply Santa Claus, so he decided to take over by hiring a trio of mischievous children named Lock, Shock, and Barrel you know, who decided to kidnap Santa in order for him to take over and started bringing all the gifts to all the children out there, you know, taking over his job and because you know exactly what happens next. So meanwhile, we meet a beautiful ragdoll woman named Sally who happens to be created by the town's mad scientist who deeply falls in love with Jack but unfortunately she has a premonition of a burning Christmas tree once she found it from the ground. And she alone fears that his plans to run Christmas will soon become a complete disaster. Yeah, she had no luck trying to contact him to to find out what's going to happen next. But that leads to to all what's going on to their amusement when when the trio delivers Santa to Oogie Boogie, who's a gambling addict boogeyman, who plots a, to play a game with Santa's life at stake. So this is where, during Christmas Eve, as, as it arrives, Sally attempts to stop Jack with fog, but fails to do so, thanks, you know, thanks to his dog, Zero. 
you know, with his glowing nose, allows him to bark into the sky, and goodness knows what happens, because he starts selling the gifts to kids by giving him, like, all these strange uh, things that were happening for Halloween, like, such as the beheaded head <laughs> that the kid just got from the... <laughs> from the box <laughs> oh man that was funny and, and then there was other scenes too but that alone would lead to bigger tr trouble because you know once he was already been attacked the entire um, police force was going after um, Jack and they was ready to shoot him while they were riding on the sleigh with Zero along and yeah it went down and until he's trying to find uh, a better way to set things right. But of course he has to save uh, Santa you know, from Oogie Boogie and stop him completely before it's too late. Yep. And that's what the film's all about. You know, a movie about what was it like. You know, having to get tired of the same holiday over and over. You want to discover a different holiday you know, that might change everything. So that way everybody gets to know better. And I like that too. I mean, this is definitely what it is. A Halloween and Christmas stop motion animated story. That has everything that they were going to go for. Has some good characters all the way around. I mean, you never forget them. This was definitely the perfect choice for, for Tim Burton to do after his success of short films that he did. That's what made it up for it. I mean, for its budget of $18 million dollars. And it made more money at the box office for over 75.1 million. That totally works completely. And yeah, and it was a box office hit. It was a perfect hit for Halloween. But of course, they even still play the film, you know, during Christmas too, um, when it came out in '93. And I, I was just so amazed at how Burton can actually do all of this, yeah, with the help of Henry Selleck, because. They definitely know how to how to become more creative with with the stop motion technology that they had to use. All the movements and everything, it was just perfect. It was, it was very dark too. It could be scary at times, I mean even for a young age. But it was worth it. And uh, yeah, once again I love the characters like Jack Skellington, yeah, he's my favorite character of all. I in fact I even dressed up like him. Yeah, last year during Halloween, yeah, and had a good time too uh, with my friend Mia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it was awesome. I also love the character Sally too. You know, yeah, I I think they both had terrific chemistry together. There's no doubt about it. Jack and Sally, and plus the mad scientist Doctor Finkelstein. You know, he was also good. Happens to be the father who created um, Sally. Yeah, and of course the mayor of Halloween Town. You know, he has um, two faces. You know, one is happy, one is sad. <laughs> yeah. And yes, the villain is Boogeyman. Yeah, Oogie Boogie. And I, I also love Lock, Stock, and Barrel's characters, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it has a great cast. I mean, they, they had um, some of the actors who had worked together as a team. I mean, it's it's great that um, they had Paul Rubens to do some voice acting, you know, since he did work as a collaboration with Tim Burton since Pee-wee's Big Adventure. And I know he also did the film Batman Returns when he played the Penguin's father. Yeah, unrecognizable, though. <laughs> But that was him. And, yeah, great cast, too. You know, Chris Sarandon, you know, doing the voice of Jack Skellington. Plus the singing voice with Danny Elfman, because he's also the, the composer of, of this wonderful score that he did. Oh, yeah, the score was amazing, too. I, I always remember all the songs that I love so much, such as What's This and and all the other songs that follow, too. I mean, it, yeah, like, this is Halloween, this is Halloween. Oh, yeah. They did a lot of good creativity here with both of them, you know. 
and I'm just glad that you know after this movie got made, it became so popular that they wanted playing them in theaters in 3D at the El Capitan Theater, that is. And yep, they also played on TV as well. So and it's a perfect tradition. It also has a dark feel to it with all the German expressionism that they put into it in the mix by using all all of that by creating the entire Halloween town and everything that they they have going for it it had a lot of that it was perfect I mean Tim Burton definitely knew what he wanted to do because you know he is what he is and I just love this movie it's it has the feel of what a Halloween and Christmas movie had to achieve it's interesting that you know Burton had the guts to to release a film from the studio that gave us you know Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. <laughs> yeah. So yes, um, you know definitely check this movie out for yourself. It's an awesome movie. Watch it anytime you like. It's it's fun. I enjoyed it. So anyway, I give Nightmare Before Christmas. Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later. Bye.